Sunday. In a frontier society like Dodge City, the sources of amusement were few, and they were liable to be rough, disreputable, and overcrowded. Most of them could lead to trouble for somebody. Sometimes one of them could lead to trouble for the whole community and for Wyatt Earp. Aren't you kind of uh, afraid of getting yourself run over sitting out here in the middle street like that? Howdy, Wyatt. Well, it's cool out here. Well, you uh, wouldn't be so warm if you'd quit wearing that rug of fringe around. Thought you'd be at the race this afternoon. Race? Yeah, a horse race. Bill Canyon's are racing his blaze stallion again this afternoon. Oh, where? Over across the river, I reckon. Well, who challenged him this time? I don't know. Man's a fool, whoever he was. Yeah, I didn't think there was a horse left that he hadn't beat. Marshal! Marshal there! What's the matter, Wendy? Indians just to the side of the bridge, not 500 yards from town and coming. Wait a minute. I'm going to the long way. Well, it's foolish, but I guess we better get out there and take a look. That's for the buffalo hides. That's for the robes. Mm. This is for the horses. Look, we've got a lot more to bet here. That all the horses you got? That is all. You can get more. You Indians can always find more horses somewhere. That's for your promise to deliver 20 more horses. That I cannot promise. Same value in hides. Marshal, what are you doing down here? I'm out to watch the race? Are you the one they call Bullhead? Little Elk's band? Yes. How's my friend, Little Oak? He's well. And my friend, Mr. Cousin? He's in the South, hunting. Yeah, I figured he was away, otherwise I would have heard about this. You know you're not supposed to be this close to town, don't you? He feared to come to us. Sure. Why should I risk my neck down there in the territory? So you egged him into crossing the treaty line, huh? All right, so why not? Now, what harm are they doing? What's wrong with a little horse race? Well, I'll tell you. Between Cheyenne and white men, there always can be trouble. Anything can start it. A misunderstanding, something little that wouldn't mean much to anybody else. Well, don't worry about it, Marshal. Ain't gonna be no trouble. There ain't enough of them to start anything. We'll send them packing just as soon as the race is over. Why, sure. And they'll be glad to get away with their skins. What if you lose? We won't lose. My horse can beat anything on four feet. You're real sure of that, huh? That's right, Marshal. I wouldn't have him if he couldn't. I'm a horse lover, Marshal. But I only love the fastest. Why, sure. Look what they brung to raise Milt Stallion. <laughs> that measly little pinno could... He's not even hardly wake enough to run a race. We won't lose, Marshal, unless you try to stop the race. Well, he'd probably just go behind my back anyway. But remember one thing, Mr. Canyon. A bet's a bet, no matter who wins. I'm going to stay right here and see that the winner collects. Why, thanks, Marshal. You do that. Bullhead, let's finish up our business. The same amount of hides. Them Cheyenne sure love to bet. I've heard they even bet their wives and kids sometimes. Look at all them buffalo robes they brought. Horses, too. Sure hate to see them lose it all. Yeah, maybe they won't. I've heard that that little pinnel horse there is right fast. Canyon don't seem to figure he's risking very much the way he's putting out his gold. He ain't gonna like it none either if he loses. Would you like to start him, Marshal? Yeah, I'll start him. You ready?
Go ahead. Must have done something. Cheated somehow. He didn't cheat. That Pino horse was the fastest. Like I said, Mr. Canyon, a bet is a bet. Go ahead and take your winnings, Bowhead. Sure. Take it. It's yours. Hey, Marshal, you're gonna let them savages take our money? You made a bet, not an investment. If you'd have won, you'd have taken their hides and horses. All right, the race is over. Going back to town. Take him back to the stables. Maybe this will teach you, Mr. Canyon. There's never a sure thing. Maybe you're right, Marshal. There's always a faster horse somewhere and a luckier man. That's quite some pinto you got there. Sure fooled me. What do you want for him? I do not want to sell. Oh, come now, I'll pay you a good price. Why do you want my horse? Yours is almost as fast. We will not race again. I want to know that I've got the fastest, that there's not another horse can beat him anywhere. Except for mine. That's just it, except for yours. Bullhead, I want that horse. No. I'll pay you 200 in gold. I do not need your gold. What do you care anyway? Just a horse to you, something for you to ride till he drops. He's good for the hunt. Wait, look around. I'm gonna have that horse one way or another, Bullhead. Now you tell him to cut him out of the herd and leave him here. I'll pull this trigger. You would be a dead man. At the first sound of a shot, the marshal and all the others will be back here mighty quick. Besides, you'll be dead first. You want my horse that bad? I do. Then shoot. Stay back, or I'll kill you. After him, we'll get up our own posse and go down and clean him out, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. All right. They probably ain't very far off. They don't figure no man's got the nerve to go on down after him, so we can catch him easy. Revenge, poor old Milt. Why about every last heathen? Oh, what do you say? Who's with me now? Get ready. Oh, come on! Where do you think you're going, Wallace? If you won't do your job, Marshal, then we're going to have to do it for you. Yeah, yeah, right. right, right. right. Did it ever occur to you, Mr. Walters, that there might be two sides to this? You gonna take the side of a savage against Milt? You gonna try to save him from what's coming to him? I'm gonna see that he stands trial, that's all. That's my job. Then why don't you do it? You let him ride right away from you. Didn't even give him a chase. That's, that's right. right. That's you right. sure didn't. Mr. Walters, you saw what their horses were like. Besides, it's not gonna be too difficult to find Little Elk's band. What about Bullhead? Give him a little time, he'll disappear. But we don't figure to let that happen. Well, neither do I. I'm going out there right now. 
But I'm going alone, Mr. Walters. You understand that? Maybe we don't figure to wait on you, Marshal. You'll wait. Now, any man that comes out of this saloon after me is going to go to jail. And I'll see to it. Bioko! Bioko! Go. Okay. How many others are with you? I came alone. I am to believe that? It is true, little elk. Your guards can watch. You do not remember me? I remember. Then you know that we are friends. A white man is dead. Is that not why you are here? Yes. I came for Bullhead. As I thought. He must go back. It is the law that I must enforce. I might trust you, my friend. But I do not trust the others. Little Oak, you must learn to trust the white man's law because your people will have to live under this law. You can trust it to be fair. Can you promise that it will return Bullhead to his people without harm? No, I cannot promise that, because he will not return if he is judged to have killed without cause. I have judged him and found him without blame. It is enough. No, it is not enough. If he does not go back, the white men will say that he is guilty and he will be hunted and punished. He must go back. Even if he wished it, he could not go. He is near death. Death? How? From the white man's bullet. May I see him? Bachoko. <laughs> bullet. Do not fear, my brother. I want to see your wound. In the back. That bullet will have to come out. Negita! Trust me. I do not want you to die. better now. Thank you. A few days you'll be well enough to travel. Then we'll head for Dodge. No. Why then do you save him? If only to take him back to die? That is cruelty. To count coup. To win him much honor. So that he can speak of his bravery around the council fires at night. Kill him, little elk. I ask it because I cannot. No, I will not kill him, but I will send him away. 
Bowhead must come back to Dodge with me. I have told you, he is without blame. And I have promised that he would be judged fairly. And that he would be returned to his people. I told you, I cannot promise that. But I will do everything I can to make it so. Bullhead is free now. Why should that be changed? You will return without him. All right. But I warn you, if he does not come back to Dodge to answer to the law, they will send soldiers. You know what will happen then. We are not afraid of soldiers. We can fight. Must your whole tribe suffer for one man? If that must be, for he is without blame. Go. I will leave. But I will tell my people that Bullhead will come to Dodge when he's well enough to travel. Until the sun is high four days from now. Farewell. <laughs> Well, Marshal Earp, it's past noon. Where is he? Yeah, where is he, Marshal? You know that Indians don't carry watches. What kind of a fool are you anyway expecting a savage to give himself up? Mr. Walters, I guess I was hoping more than expecting. I don't think you expecting at all. Because I don't think you went to that Cheyenne camp. So we'll have to go after Bullhead. And if because of all this wasted time he's given us the slip, we'll be back to talk to you, Herb. You're talking to me right now, Mr. Walters. I'm going to tell you all the same thing I told you before. Any man that goes into that Indian territory is going to go to jail. You can't put the whole town in jail. Oh, no, you bet you can, Marshal. I'm warning you, Walters. Well, save your breath. If you want to know what I think, Marshal, I think you're a coward. I think you're afraid to go in there after Bullhead. What? What? It's Bullhead, Little Elk. Put down those guns. Put him down! Little Elk. My brother has come so that all may know the truth, and so that his tribe need not suffer for him. You will remember your promise, white man? He will be judged fairly. I will see to it. It will be well if you do, or if you do not. Look at that. Mounds are covered with Indians. They brought the whole tribe. I'll go now. Follow me. the boys you brought to back up your story? They can say I speak the truth. All right, inside. The jail? That's right. We'll be safe until the hearing this afternoon. Earth and all his Indians. Here come. Yeah. I have earth and like it. Oh, I yield with you, you lover. Black hole is just a squaw man. You two, you two, shotgun, you're just another Indian. Hey, where do you think you're going? I got a right to go in there. He was my friend. I let him in. The rest of you stay outside. What's the matter with us? Stay out. Oh, no, why can't we? And then he said he would shoot me, that I would be dead before my friends could help me. I turned to my horse, and that is when he shot me. He was going to shoot me again. But I knocked the gun away and leaped upon him and drove the knife into him. And that is all. I did not want to kill him, but I'm not sorry. Do you actually believe a cock and bull story like that? 
Mr. Walters, I must remind you, this is a court of law. Besides, the story is plausible. We all know that Canyon was crazy about his racehorses, that he had to have only the fastest. Besides, what possible motive did he have? He'd already won most of Mr. Canyon's money. Since when does a savage need a motive for killing? They've been spreading blood across this West for a generation. Mr. Walters, we cannot allow past events to prejudice us. We are here only to consider the killing of Milk Canyon, nothing more. Well, there's not an ounce of proof for his story. But there is, Your Honor. Can you explain that, Marshal Earp? The proof is in Bullhead's back. Stand up, Bullhead. Turn around. Lift up your shirt. You see that wound? Bullhead was shot in the back. That proves he had to be attacked first. He was shot in the back as he tried to get on his horse. How do you know that's a bullet wound in his back? Because I took the bullet out. And there's proof, Your Honor. Well, seems there's nothing more to say. The court calls it justifiable homicide. Case dismissed. Mr. Wallace, starting Indian trouble means trouble for everybody. Take them over their horses. Break it up! Get out of the way. Uh, no. All right, Marshal, what's the verdict? Justifiable homicide, case dismissed. That's what we was afraid of. If Judge Tobin is scared of them Cheyennes, we ain't. We aim to see justice done. Well, you do, do you? Well, Bullhead killed Canyon in self-defense. Ask Wallace. Go on, ask him if it isn't true. Walt, is it? Yeah, it's true. Thanks, Mr. Wallace. Wendell. You tell Little Elk that after this, he should trust the white man's law. Wendell. Look at you. Hi. The day will come when they always can. Yeah, I hope so. They had a juvenile delinquent problem in 1878, too. Kids from the small towns and cities of the East and Middle West headed for the frontier in search of excitement or reputations as outlaws. Dodge City had a plague of these brats, and Marshal Wyatt Earp didn't have a child guidance expert or a psychiatrist to tell him just what to do. Marshal Wyatt Earp used plain, common horse sense. Drink here. Don't take all day about it. How old are you? Old enough. Well, I don't know. You don't look more than 16 or 17 to me. I ordered a drink. There's my money. Hold it, Mr. Bryce. Have to arrest you, Sonny. What for? Back in a gun, you're too young to be hanging around the saloon. I'm past 21. Well, you forgot to check your coat in the gun rack. Come on. I hate you, cops. Well, that's too bad. Go on. No matter what you do to me, I'm not going to talk. Sit down there and stay there. Another runaway, Mr. Gibbs. Just keep dropping off every freight train. I came in a regular train car, and I'm not a vagrant. Hey, up, kid. Seems to me you take an awful lot of size off these smart kids. What he needs is a good larrapin with a hickory stick. You just try it. Mr. Gibbs, you go on patrol. I'll be glad to. Smart aleck, loudmouth kids are coming in here raising cane. As for you, Sonny, don't you go around daring a man to spank you. You'll be able to find somebody to take you up on it. Not while I have my gun. Well, I'm holding this. I want your name, where you're from, and your age. It'll save a lot of time and trouble for both of us. My name is John Smith. I'm 21 and I come from Chicago. Now, what's the charge? You have a job at $25? I've got $500. Want me to count it for you? 
Where'd you steal all that? You prove I stole it. All right, $25. For what? For violating the city ordinance. Failure to check your firearms. Do I get my gun back? Nope, I'm holding your gun. Till you tell me where you're from, and what your name is, and what your age is. Cops. Two tens and a five. Anything else? Yeah, you get on that first train heading home. I may not be able to hold you for vagrancy, but you keep hanging around Dodge and you're going to be jailbait. That's what you say. You don't like policemen, do you? You probably think that all hoodlums and outlaws are real nice people, don't you? I sure do. Well, I've heard a lot of young fellas say that and used to think it was very funny, but I don't think it's very funny anymore. You're going to have to learn the hard way. Well, thanks for the fatherly advice. You must have paid Ned Buntline to make you a tin star hero. Walt? Walt? Right here, Mark. Take a look at that window. See that kid walking up the street? I want you to tail him. I just took his gun away. First thing you'll do is try to buy another one. Dodge City kid, huh? Walt, a punk like that can kill you just as dead as a grown man. You be careful. I got a hunch he's from a good family. Maybe we can stop him before he lands in the reform school. Howdy, son. What can I do for you? I want a Colts 45. Colts Frontier. Let's see, uh, how old are you? I'm past 21. About 17, I'd say. Can't sell you a handgun. How about a nice 22 rifle? No, I, I want a Colt 45. I'll pay you $10 above the price. Sorry, son. Here's the $40. Well, what are you scared of? Come on, give me the gun. I don't know, Sonny. What's a kid like you want with a 45? Don't call me Sonny. What I want with a gun is my business. Now, you're gonna sell it or not? All right, all right, I'll sell it. But now, mind you, don't you tell Erper you got it, because there happens to be a town law against it. Howdy, Morton. Oh, uh, howdy. Uh, I was just showing the kid the gun. No harm in that. Take a good look, kid. Now, you go hang that on the rack, Morton. Sure. What right have you got to butt into my business? The law and Marshal Earp don't want children to have guns. My advice, Sonny, try some other town. Well, that does it. Well, what can I do for you, Marshal? Well, sir, I'm trying to trace a young fellow that says he came in on a sleeper from the east. Uh, blonde-headed boy. Kid about 17 years old, maybe five foot seven, eight. Mm-hmm. He came in number nine last night. Think there's any way of tracing where he might have bought his ticket? Well, I could send a wire to Sam Willoughby. He's the conductor on number nine. He'd no point of origin, maybe even his name. Fine. Do it, would you? Kid making trouble? Well, he's trying awful hard, too. I'd like to send him home before anything happens.
shotgun you and Walt go around the front. What if that kid starts shooting? Well, then take cover, but don't shoot back. And I'll try and get in behind him. Maybe you'll walk an arsenal. We better win him. No. Now go ahead, start for the front. I'll give you time. Tried to buy a gun from me this Shotgun, afternoon. Shotgun, take him over to jail. Use the back door. My pleasure. All right, break it up, everybody. Just a fool kid, nobody hurt. Walt, I'm going to check his room at the hotel. Now get those people out of here. He tried to steal my guns, broke my window. Huh. Wyatt, this one goes to reform school and there's no begging him off. We'll see, Your Honor. Now you check your stock. I want a full report. Reform school. That's where he goes, reform school. <laughs> Marshal? Marshal, the telegraph operator left this for you. Thank you. Steubenville, Ohio. Point of ticket origin. Passenger bought Pullman space at Cincinnati, giving name of John Smith, Jr. The kid who robbed Jim Kelly? Yeah. I'll wire the police at Steubenville. You have the maid straighten this place up. Will the boy come back here? I doubt it. Leave his luggage here. Well, it's about time. He's the son of a distinguished member of the Ohio Bar and circuit court judge. Well, what if he is? The boy was caught red-handed. Oh, take it easy, Jim. His folks will be here soon. Too many dime novels and Wild West shows, I suppose. I wish I really knew. Well, I know. Dime novels and Buffalo Bill don't make a criminal. His folks neglected him or something. The boy's father is the judge. He wouldn't neglect his son. Oh, indeed, now. Every time a kid goes wrong, only his parents get the blame. You go along with that, Marshal? Sometimes, not always. What do you think, Mr. Gibbs? Well, sir, I'll tell you what I think. I don't believe these kids is whooped enough. Well, the parents won't use discipline, and they won't let the teachers use it either. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Kelly. I suggest we hold Alf in jail just until his folks get here. It's the only fair thing to do. I say no. I won't withdraw my charge. That young hoodlum goes to reform school, and that's final. If you gentlemen will excuse me. Well, I guess I'll go feed Roscoe his breakfast. I still say it's the trash they read and the stage shows they see. They all glorify the outlaw, make him a sort of a Robin Hood. Our friends Buntline and Cody have their share of the blame. No, sir. What do you mean? Well, judge thousands of kids all over the country read dime novels, they go to theaters, they watch Buffalo Bill. 99% of them have more sense and try to act that stuff out in real life. Now, there's something else bothering Alf. You think he's loco? No, sir. But he doesn't, well, he doesn't react to things like any other normal kid. The world, life as it actually is. He's got no sense of realism. It's about as close as I can get to it. Yeah. We're going to have trouble with Jim. All he can think about is reform school. Well, reform school isn't going to solve anything with this boy. No, I think we're going to have to wait until his folks get here, see what they're like, what they have to say. Yes, yeah, you're right. You're lucky, Wyatt. You're not a parent. My daughters call me a grumpy, stuffed shirt. <laughs> hey, kid. How long you in for? Not long. Well, 30 days? All I have to do is telegraph my folks. They'll get me out. When'll that be? I don't know. Why? Well, they've got me for robbing a stage. You a stage robber? I'm no greenhorn. Well, bang your cup on the bars. When it comes, ask him. I suppose you were the leader of the gang. No. Greasy Merkin. 
You've heard of him, huh? Crazy Merkin. He's wanted by the Pinkertons and the Federals. What's the deal? Well, Greasy don't know that Rip caught me. Him and the boys are camped south of Dodge. Get it? Now, I was thinking, if your folks spring you, will you get the word to Greasy? Ten dollars, kid? I don't need money. Greasy won't hurt you. He'll treat you like a real friend. Shut up, will you? Let me think. <laughs> Well, this here kid says he wants to talk to you. What about? About sending a telegram, he says. All right, send him in. I don't like you shoving me around. You need worse than that. Take it easy, Mr. Gibbs. We're dealing with a child, you know. Now, what's on your mind? I want to send a telegram. Is there any law against it? You, by any chance, would want to send a telegram to Mr. and Mrs. Judge Horton of Steubenville, Ohio, would you? Because Mr. and Mrs. Horton are already on their way here to Dodge. They think you uh, might be their son, Alfred. Little Alfie, 17 years old, stole $900 from his papa, being hunted by police and private detectives all over the Middle West. Gee, what a smart cop. Would you like to notify anybody else, Alfie? No, nah, never mind. Stop right there, driver. Now, Madge, you go on to the hotel and register. I'm going over to jail. No, I'll go with you. All right, then. Mr. and Mrs. Judge Horton? Yes. Oh, you must be Marshal Earp. Yes, sir. I've uh, been kind of watching out for you. Well, thank you, Marshal. I just want you to know how much Mrs. Horton and I appreciate the way you've handled this. How is Alfred? He wasn't injured, was he? No, ma'am. You'll have plenty of chance to talk to him before Judge Tobin hears the case. In uh, open court, I'm afraid? Sir, we try to handle our minors quietly. Oh, thank you, Marshal. Thank you. I, I don't know how this happened or what we did wrong. I, uh, I hope the court will parole after us. Yes, give us another chance. Well, ma'am, Judge Tobin, Mayor Kelly, they're understanding men. Driver, would you take the bags over to the Dodge house? Please come with me. Oh! Oh, sir, oh! Don't shoot! Let him go! Mar Marshal, wasn't that our son? Yes, sir. Now, you and Mrs. Horton go on over to the hotel. I'll take care of things. You won't hurt him, will you? What are you going to do with him? I'm just going to try and bring him back. Now, you go on over to the hotel. Now, don't worry, ma'am. Come on, Madge. I told Walt not to trust him, but he said you give him permission to let him wait for his folks in the jail office. He whacked Walt on the head and stole his rifle and pistol and took off. Any idea what trail he might have taken? Well, him and Dode Clemens in the next cell was mighty friendly. I reckon he'd ride south to join Greasy Merkin. That's right. <laughs> Come on, move that view. Mr. Greasy Merkin here? What's it to you, Sonny? I got a note from Dode Clemens. He's in jail in Dodge City. Let me have it. Are you the Greasy Merkin, the famous outlaw? I ain't doubting your word. You, you just don't look like an outlaw leader. <laughs> there you are, Greasy. You should have shaved this morning. You should have yeah. shaved. Yeah. Shut up. It's from Dode, all right. I didn't stay in jail. Why, you can't do that. One of your own men. You got to ride in there and spring him. You're a fresh kid, ain't you? Grab his gun. Here I 
got a dishwasher for you, Cookie. I didn't come here to wash dishes. It's a spoiled brat from back east somewhere. You're gonna have to whoop some sense into it. If you don't need a real hand, then give me my guns and let me go. Well, now I couldn't do that. I've changed hideouts. I don't want you to go blabbing to Wyatt Earp. I hate him. Give me my 45 and I'll ride back to Dodge and gun him. <laughs> <laughs> Big talk. You wash the dishes. No. You hold him, boss. I'll whip him. <laughs> Here, I owe him a few licks, too. Ow! Ow! And his father and I tried all the rules to win Alfred's confidence. Judge Horton took him hunting and fishing. I reasoned with him. So did his teachers and Mr. Radford, our minister. Nothing seemed to do any good, Judge. Instead of loving us, I, I think he came to dislike us. Mm. Well, people who don't have any children always say that parents are too harsh or too indulgent or... What do you say, Mr. Mayor? I don't know. I was in favor of sending him to reform school. But after listening to you folks, I just don't know. A reform school? Now, Madge. Well, this has been a trying session for all of us. When Marshal Earp brings the boy back, I'll ask him his opinion. <laughs> going to get Alf out of there without shooting? We won't. What do you mean? Alf has joined Greasy's gang. Day or so of them will teach him more about outlaws than all our preaching can do. We'll tell his folks we came back to form a posse. Ain't you taking a big chance, Wyatt? That boy needs a good whipping, I admit. But old Greasy might hurt him real bad. Well, if he keeps on the way he's going now, he's going to hang someday. Toughen up, Mr. Gibbs. It's a hard world, and outlaws are scum. And Alf, he's got to learn realism. If he doesn't, what's the point in taking him back to bedevil his folks the rest of their lives? Let's get out of here. that knife, kid? No. I hate you. I hate and despise you all. Well, gee. You're afraid of Wyatt Earp. Yeah? I'll blast him down, but you won't give me my gun. Give it to him, boss. He's local enough to try gunning Earp. Yeah, maybe even lucky enough. All right, kid. I'm calling your bluff. It's no bluff. Just give me my gun. Couldn't find him? No, sir. We'll have to form a posse. Right away, Marshal. His mother's frantic. Well, not tonight, Judge Horton. Just a couple hours before dark. Well, he's probably hiding someplace in the brush. I'll go along and explain to your wife. I'd appreciate it. She's almost hysterical. Good night, Marshal. Good night, sir. Mighty nice folks are Hortons. I don't understand how they could have a son like Alf. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Kelly. I think they had an ancestor. Way back, about ten generations ago. Some romantic fool that rode around a great big white charger, shining armor, poking swords at windmills. Speaking of local fools, I gotta go check the cattle pens. That's the uh, romantic part about my job. <laughs> Mr. Earp. Oh, howdy, Mr. Horton. Draw. I dare you, draw. No, thanks. All right. I gave you a fair break.
You know, all the bad men of the West have notches in their guns. So I'm going to give you a notch, Mr. Horton. You killed a steer. Of course, it won't be a very big notch. You only killed a small steer. But you can remember it with pride for the rest of your life. My mom and dad in town? Yeah, well, they're at the Dodge house. Look, hide me in jail. Tell them I'm dead. Anything but the truth. Don't you ever be afraid of the truth, son. I think Judge Tobin will parole you to your folks on one condition. What's the condition? Just say you're sorry. Who's there? Marshal Irk, sir. Come in. I've been a fool. I'm sorry. I'm awful sorry. Thank you, Marshal. of Skinner Smith, Lone Shark, Skin Flint, and the most disliked man in Dodge City presented Marshall Earp with the strangest murder mystery of his career. Public opinion was all on the side of the murderer. People thought Skinner Smith deserved killing, and Wyatt found himself almost alone in his determination to solve the case. Well, we just want to see if Skinner's really dead. Too good to be true. Be a good sport, Mr. Gibbs. Let us in. Nope. Wyatt and Doc McCarty's in there. I got strict orders to keep all of you out. Now, why don't you move along? Get along. Right. Well? Let's just say he died a heart failure. And good riddance. Doc? It was poison, wasn't it? I guess so. Well, this town loathed him. Skinner Smith had it coming. Well, it's not for you or I to say. My job's to find out how he got that poison. Wyatt, can't you let it drop? Nope. All right. Here. I found it in his hand. Plug of chewing tobacco. The killer poison this? I suspect so. Just call it heart failure. Save a lot of trouble. You can't do that. You're the coroner. Is there any way of testing this for poison? Look, Wyatt. Smith was the meanest man in Dodge. If you do find the one responsible for this, he'll be a public hero. Why get involved? I'm willing to sign the death certificate. You just think you are. Look, I don't know anything good about Smith either. But murder's murder, and we're public officials. All right. It'll take me a half a day to test for poison. But as you say, I'm coroner, and I get paid $10 a month. You never signed a phony death certificate in your life. Now, do your duty, coroner. All right, you folks go back and let the doctor. Stay back here. Hey, cut that out and go about your business. Loud and mouth busybodies. Doc thinks he was poisoned. Strychnine? He's making an analysis. I hope it is strychnine. Got any idea who done it? No. But you take these pawn tickets and work on them. I'll work on the ledger. We got a list of clients. You want me to arrest everybody in town who admits they threatened they wanted to kill Skinner? No, Mr. Gibbs, but just try and find somebody that had a fight with him recently. Well, I'll have to arrest myself then. You? You want to hear some of the names I call Skinner? Not right now, Mr. Gibbs. Come on, let's go to work. <laughs> All right, back up. You pawned your saddle to him. And later on, I heard you threatened to kill him. Yeah, I threatened to kill him. He sold my saddle because I was two days late in redeeming it. But you didn't kill him? No. Nope. Just never got around to it, Marshal. And that isn't all, Mr. Earp. Skinner charged me $5 a week interest on the ring. When I paid him off, I found out that he'd put a phony diamond in place of the real one. Why don't you come to me about this? 
his word against mine. I figured that uh, when my gentleman friend got in from the drive, he'd even things with Skinner. Yes, sir, I did say he ought to be shot. Why? He dug up an old note that he said, Dear Miss Dora, may God rest her lovely soul, still owed him. I tore it up and slapped his face. Yeah. One of nature's noblemen, Skinner Smith. I wish you'd be practical. If you did find the man who did it, how would you get a jury to convict him? Well, that's their job, Mr. Kelly. My duty's done when I bring the murder to trial. Bad cess to you. That's Irish for hoping you never solved the case. Oh, I'll solve it. I'm stubborn that way. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Mm -hmm. Honey, where's your buggy? Around the corner. What's wrong? There's no one here. You can tell me now. I've saved enough money. Why don't we get married? That again? Yeah. Only this time, I've got to get out of town, Janie. Clark, you're not in any trouble at the bank, are you? No, no. Of course not. It's... Well, I'm asking you to trust me, Janie. To marry me now, today. Clark, you know that's impossible. Grandpa had another spell with his heart this morning. Grandpa. It's always Grandpa. He hasn't much longer, Clark. I'm the only one he has to take care of him. I'm sorry. He doesn't think much of me, but I'm right fond of him. Well, I don't defend Grandpa. He has some notions that I ought to marry a soldier or a fighting marshal like Mr. Earp. Clark, I love you, but you're going to have to be patient and understand. All right. I'll try. Not here, please. You better get back inside. those crystals? Prussic acid, and perhaps some strychnine, enough to kill a horse. And one bite at that plug did for Skinner. You found any suspects? A couple of dozen. Haven't talked to a man or woman that isn't a suspect. Come in. Well, how'd you make out? Oh, I talked about 20 people. They all denied killing him, but they regretted being so shiftless and lazy. The only way you can narrow it down is to find someone who had access to poison in undiluted form. What about your patients, Doctor? Don't you prescribe strychnine, prussic acid? Very small amounts. I couldn't help you anyway. Confidential relation between doctor and patient. Yeah. Well, what are you so cheerful about? Killing Skinner is a public service. I think Doc done it. Arrest me, Marshal. Gentlemen, murder is not funny. Mr. Gibbs, you and the deputies don't get any time off until we solve this case. You know, Doc, I believe in enforcing the law with reasonable moderation. But old Wyatt there, he's got the stern moral character of a bloodhound. I will have to help him, Shotgun. He is right, you know. I know he is. Doc, you got any smart ideas on this thing? No, but I'll check my records. Eleven patients to see, and I play detective. Give Wyatt a tip. Suggest that he look on the respectable side of town. This is no tramp's job. Thank you, Doc. <laughs> Father, you stop that right now. You know Dr. McCarty told you not to do any work. Oh, I've been a hard-working man all my life, and now I can't even fix a little chair. Now, don't you go giving me any trouble. I've had enough with Clark. He still pestering you about marrying him? Mm -hmm. Well, if you're so sad on it, go ahead. Well, I'm not, but I am worried. Hmm? Well, something's wrong with Clark. He's acting strange. He wants me to marry him and leave Dodge right away. Oh. It can't be that he's stealing from a bank. 
That'd take a certain amount of courage. Well, Clark has courage. Too much courage. <laughs> Fush now. He is. He's been gambling. Hmm. Euchre for Penny Ante. No, poker with some cattlemen in a back room at the Dodge Hotel. Maybe he did kill Skinner Smith. Grandpa, that's not a very nice joke. Nope. And I ain't a very nice old man. I wish Clark had killed him. I'd have more respect for the boy. Did you take your medicine today, Grandpa? McCarty's pap? <laughs> Smell my breath. <sighs> oh, whiskey, Grandpa. So that's why you made that joke about Clark. I'm as high as a hoot owl. <laughs> Mears Rod Morris, fifteen dollars. All right, here's some bigger ones back here. J. B. Olson, one hundred and seventy-five dollars. Alex Griffith, two hundred dollars. You think we're getting any warm on this? Olson and Griffith, Mark paid. Yeah, both of them. Well, let's start on the delinquent accounts. Those are the ones that Skinner might have pushed too hard. Look, Clark borrowed $50 from Skinner May 18th. Paid it back with $20 interest June 3rd. Well, look at this one over here. Borrowed $100 from him a couple of weeks ago. Skinner's got him marked delinquent. I better have a talk with Clark. Well, don't do it at the bank. It might be a little embarrassing. No, I'll... Quiet. Mr. Hookham says Clark just left on the eastbound stage. He ain't checked the cash yet, but he's afraid... You watch the jail. <laughs> Matthews, uh, Mr. Matthews, the uh, bank thinks you ought to postpone your trip for a few days. Thank you, Marshal. I, uh, I told Mr. Holcomb I'd better wait. Uh, Mr. Casey, would you hand his bag down? Give it to our friend Shotgun there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Casey. Come on up here. Get up! Help! Ah! You lost a lot of money gambling. You couldn't go to the bank to borrow it where you work, so you borrowed it from Skinner Smith. Paid Skinner every dime I owe him, and with interest. Go on. Uh, then he started blackmailing me, threatened to tell my boss I'd been gambling. I didn't kill him. Well, I'm going to have to hold you. I know it. You better let me notify Miss Janie and Grandpa Logan. Oh. No, sir. Please. Well, they're going to find out about it anyway. You may need a lawyer. Do you think I killed him, Mr. Earp? Still haven't told me why he tried to run away. No, sir. I never will. Well, the law says you don't have to. Mr. Gibbs, I do feel you may need a lawyer. Mr. Gibbs, we're going to hold Mr. Matthews. Suspicion of murder, put him in a cell by himself. Son, why don't you make a clean breast of the whole thing? Said all I'm going to say. Janie. Janie, don't try it. Give me my rifle and I'll... No, Grandpa, they might shoot at you. I'll get Clark out of there in two minutes. Hello, Wyatt. Hello, Doc. Well, you probably arrested the right man. No. Why do you say that? He was one of my patients. Under oath in a murder trial, I'd have to testify that he had access to poison. You missing any strychnine or prussic acid? I'm not under oath yet. Oh, I hate this business. Yeah, well, so do I. 
Maybe I can get him to confess. I'll have another try at it anyway. Thanks. You're so welcome. <laughs> You give me those keys. I ain't got them, sis. Are you telling me the truth? Marshal Earp has the keys. Where'd he go? Doc McCarty's. Why don't you rest yourself, Miss Janie? Them old big buffalo guns is mighty hefty for a gal like you to be lugging around. Ah, oh, that's just a trick to disarm me. No, no, I ain't gonna try that. I just want you to light somewhere. Why don't you have a seat on that bench over there? Oh, no. Did I hurt you? No, Miss Janie. A little gal like you shouldn't be carrying around a loaded rifle. Mr. Gibbs, you take Miss Janie on home. Tell her grandfather he can have his rifle back in the morning. Clark didn't do it. I know he didn't. Easy now, sis. You turn him loose. You can't make him confess to something he didn't do. Clark's gonna need a lawyer, Miss Janie. You tell Grandpa Logan that. Come along, sis. Can't I even talk to him, please? Not now, in the morning. You shouldn't be a deacon in our church. You're heartless and cruel and mean. Pete, bring Mr. Matthews in here. Pete, you take off. Yes, Martin. I heard a shot. Grandpa Logan been here? No, it was Miss Janie. I sent her home with Mr. Gibbs. Sit down. Mr. Matthews, I've advised the Logans to get you a lawyer. You had a very strong motive for killing Mr. Smith. I think I can prove you had access to poison. All right. You prove that. Why don't you tell me the whole story? I think Judge Tobin will be lenient. No, sir. You still don't want to tell me why you tried to run away, huh? Marshal, I've talked too much already. You trying to shield someone? Now, you just do what you have to do, Mr. Earp. Listen, why don't you confess and get this whole miserable business over with? I can promise you an easy sentence, maybe a parole. Judge Tobin will be here tomorrow. Look, what's the sense in forcing us to trial? Skinner Smith was a low-down, worthless character, but you put on me the burden of seeing that you're punished more than you should be. I don't expect you to consider my feelings, but what about Miss Janie? Don't you care about her? I'm sorry, Marshal. Can I go back to the cell now? All right. But you think about this. Grandfather, don't you even feel sorry for Clark? Sorry? I was beginning to admire the boy. Yo, what? Shotgun Gibbs says that he ain't confessed. That proves he's got real sand. Yep, I was wrong about Clark. Then you think he's guilty? Not the point at all, Janie. Grandfather, are you yourself? The point is that if Clark don't confess, they'll have to turn him loose. Even after they caught him running out of town? Don't signify, Janie. They got nothing but circumstantial evidence against Clark. No matter what Wyatt Earp tries to link together, the jury will acquit him hands down. Then you will hire a lawyer for him? Yes. Old Joe Garrison. The best lawyer in the whole state of Kansas. It's a sheer waste of money, though. Of course it is, Grandfather. But at least I can sleep easy now. I'm half asleep myself. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, you've had your nightcap. Come on. Help me, darling. Oh, it's way past my bedtime. You know, that Wyatt Earp might be a first-class man with a gun, but he ain't no legal genius. You get his comeuppance tomorrow. I hope so, Grandfather. <laughs> Morning, Judge. Howdy, Wyatt. I uh, got a murder case for you. No? Well, who's the victim? Skinner Smith. Well, that's logical. I warned Smith to leave Dodge months ago. Who killed him? Young fellow works over the bank, Clark Matthews. It's only circumstantial evidence, though. Well, let's go over and have breakfast and you tell me all about it, huh? Yes, sir. 
I link blackmail to the fact that Clark Matthews tried to run away. And the further fact that Doc McCarty admits that he had access to poison. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to ask you for a bench warrant charging Mr. Matthews with first-degree murder. Yes, I suppose you do. It's a sound circumstantial case, isn't it? If anyone but Skinner or Smith were the victim. You mean a jury may not convict? That's about it. Well, how about a change of venue to some other town? Well, I can't order that. Not unless you're willing to testify that the citizens of Dodge have made threats against you in the court. No, sir. Change of venue is customarily the right of the defendant, not the prosecution. Well, I have no case. Well, frankly, Watt, I don't even think you have the right suspect. How's that? Well, now, you suggested the possibility that Matthews was shielding someone. Hasn't it occurred to you that someone killed Smith to shield Matthews? Well... You said I could see Clark today. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, I think you've met Judge Tobin? Yes, I have. How are you, sir? Fine, thank you. And how's your grandpa? Well, he's worse, I'm afraid. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Marshal Earp didn't help anyone he arrested Clark. Grandfather had a very bad night. I, I had to send for Dr. McCarty. Uh, Wyatt, I'll arrange for Miss Jane to see young Matthews. I suggest that you go on over and pay a visit to Grandpa Logan. He's a, he's a wonderful old man, and I think you owe him that courtesy. Oh, uh, yes, sir. I'll go right away. But don't you mention Skinner Smith. No, ma'am. I'll be careful. Howdy, Doc. Morning. How's Grandpa Logan? It's not good. Not well enough to be questioned. I just stopped by for a social visit. Well, he hasn't got much time left. Day, week. Well, I won't stay long enough to tire him. Good. Grandpa Logan? Come in, Wyatt. Howdy. Did you hang that boy yet? No, sir. Not yet. Well, I was afraid he'd confess. So I reckon I'd better tell. Read it. The doctor said it was prussic acid. Uh, mostly strychnine. It's a rattlesnake venom. Every time I went downtown, that Skinner would grub a chaw of tobacco from me. The other day, I told him, take the whole thing. He took it. Yes, sir, he took the whole grub and chaw and tobacco. How'd you know Skinner was trying to blackmail young Matthews? No. <laughs> that twisty skunk. He told me Clark had threatened him. I called that boy on the carpet, and I told him, you leave the killing to one who's poison, coyotes, and wolf. You fetch me my cane, Marshal. I'll go along with you. No, sir. I'm burning this. But I don't want you to write anymore, Mr. Logan. Well, now, I thank you kindly. For Janie's sake, I mean. Yes, sir. For Miss Janie. Shake hands with Mr. Logan. Thank you. After all the trouble he's caused, I certainly will not. You seem mighty sure. Yes, sir, Mr. Matthews, I am very sure. Don't you tell anyone ever. This is a case for a good judge and a good lord. I'm just a deacon. Thank you, sir. Well, he cleaned 
opened up the country, the old wild west country. He made law and order prevail. And none can deny it, the legend of Wyatt forever will live on the trail. Oh, Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp, brave, courageous, and bold. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be told. thủy thủ mặt trăng và người bạn nhỏ cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi video hướng dẫn tô màu của mình xin chào